Good night and welcome to Calvary Chapel. Let us pray. <sighs> Lord Jesus, we just want to worship you tonight. We want to forget about what we did today, what we're going to do later and tomorrow, and just focus on you. For you are good and you are worthy to receive all glory and all honor and all power. So be exalted in this place. Search our hearts, Lord, and see if there be anything that would separate us from you. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. And have your way in our hearts tonight. Glorify yourself. Be exalted in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Again, I, I want to pray for you know Dick and Donna. That, that's on their last night here with us. You guys will be this Saturday, right? You know, we prayed for them on on Sunday morning, but we want to pray for them again tonight uh, and, and take them out. Wish them a happy, safe trip. We'll come back soon, right? So, Father, we want to come before you on behalf of our brother and our sister, Dick and Donna. Lord, there's just a blessing to have with us here, and I know they need to go home and get a little rest from the heat. Uh, but bring them back to us, Lord, and, and give them a safe journey there. Protect them, keep them healthy, Lord, and bless them while they're gone from us. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, while we're praying, we want to pray for the women and the women's retreat coming up. You anoint all those who are ministering at the retreat in one way or another, Lord. You will uh, fill them with your spirit. You will use them to bless the women. And we pray that they not the women not just go there and eat food, but they would eat your word, Lord. They would become more like you, Lord. They would, they would have a life-changing experience while they're there. And they would bring that back to their families. So be with them, Lord. Bless them. Protect them on the road and bring them back safely to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14 tonight. One verse you know you heard all about getting murdered last week. Glad I avoided that one. Actually, that might have been easier than this one. I don't know. 
You shall not commit adultery. The seventh commandment. You shall not commit adultery. Just a prelude before I get into my study here. You know, a marriage between a man and a woman is to be a picture of Jesus Christ in his church. Are you guys lost? Exodus 20, verse 14. Actually, you know, you, you might as well turn to Proverbs 6, because that's where we're going to spend most of our time, Proverbs 5 and 6. But it's a picture. That's why God, you know, fornication, sex outside of marriage, God forbids it, because it destroys the picture between us and Him. A man and a wife, you know, as the man lays down his life for his wife that he's supposed to do, die for her. That's what Jesus did for us. And the woman to honor him and respect him and to submit to him as the leader of the home, as we do to Jesus Christ. It's just the order of things. It's not one is better than the other. That's just the way God made it. It's like you have a boss, the boss is above you, you got to listen to the boss. I mean, you know, it, it, it works. It's just the order of things. So, but it's that picture. And when we do it rightly, people see Jesus in us. Proverbs 6, Matthew chapter 5, you know, we're, we're going to be in those chapters today, but of all the commandments, number 7 is kind of the least understood and probably the most argued against. Because the world is into sex. What's the matter with a little fun, you know? You know, most people don't have trouble with the other nine. Thou shalt not commit murder. You got any trouble with that? I mean, you can ask, ask somebody that sleeps around with everybody and you say, well, that's okay. Well, thou shalt not commit murder. Oh, no, we don't do that. You know, they have no problem with the other commandments. But this one sometimes is just misunderstood. Stealing a line? People know, you know, yes, not supposed to do that. But when it comes to the seventh, people think this is impractical and impossible to follow. Look at the world today. Yeah, come on now. Years ago, this man, in, in, uh, Ted Turner, he's owns the, one of the broadcasting stations. At Time Magazine, Ted Turner said this. If you're going to have ten rules, then adultery should not be one of them. Where he's a very worldly man. And the world would say, give me a break, I'm only human. Yes, exactly, we are human. We're not animals. Animals... That's what they do. And we act like animals when we sleep around and we mess around. We're like animals. And you know, human humans will say, well, yeah, we're all species of animals. We're just the top of the chain. <laughs> we're human. That's what separates us. So we're not to act like animals in our sexual behavior. We're not animals. We're made in the image of God. We have a spirit and a soul. You know, animals, you know, I, I like my dogs. They're all into themselves. They, you know, want, 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 you know. And my buddy, uh, buddy thinks that if there's any food around it, it's his. He's just got to eat, eat, eat. It's all about him. And you see that, that's what they're like. And humans will act that way sometimes. You know, the world just doesn't understand that. They're like, but they act like animals. They do it with whoever they want. And as many as they want. You know, it's important that we understand this commandment. Now, Proverbs 6 says this. Proverbs 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law a light. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life, to keep you from evil women, from the flattering tongue of a seductress. Do not lust after her beauty in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. I don't know what that means, you know. That never did anything for me. <laughs> People, I, I laugh. It's like, I laugh. It's like watching a cartoon. But maybe some people, yeah. Back in those days. For by means of a harlot, a man is reduced to a crust of bread. And an adulteress will prey upon his precious life. Can a man take fire to his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be seared? 
so is he who goes in to his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. Yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. <clears throat> but whoever commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He who does so destroys his own soul. You know, here's the issue. You know, it's not about unwanted pregnancy, which happens many times. It's about your soul. You destroy your soul. See, your souls become united when you have a sexual reunion. You become one with that person. It's a spiritual thing that happens. Genesis 5, 2 says, Male and female created he them. The Lord created a man and a woman. And he blessed them and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. They are one. Their souls have been merged together. Sex is not just about procreation and recreation, even though it's fun, but it's two becoming one. Now, I'm in church saying sex is fun. <laughs> Boy, you want me to lie, oh, no, sex is not fun. I mean, sex is fun, that's why, you know, people want to do it all the time and they sin. Sex is fun. But when you have sex outside of marriage, you destroy your soul. You mess yourself up. You know, Solomon addressed that when talking to his son. I think in Ecclesiastes 5 or something. You know, he wasted the best years of his life in immorality. And he was the wisest man who ever lived. He had more wisdom than him. He had... The wisest man who ever lived had 1,000 of the most beautiful women ever were his. They were wise. I can't even handle one, man. 999 more Annas for dinner. See, Solomon had every fantasy that you can imagine. All of them came true. And it burned and it was empty. Zero. No good. He's done all that. Learn from my pains. Proverbs 5, turn there. Listen, he says. It's Proverbs, not things he asked I'm sorry. Proverbs 5. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. See, he'd been there, man. He had a thousand women, right? I mean, he had it, you know. This guy knows. He'd been there, right? Pay attention to my wisdom, son. Lend your ear to my understanding that you may preserve discretion and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey and her mouth is smoother than oil. You know, that picture always amazes me. I, you know, I, I, I'm like, I think like Anna's very picture. You know, can you see honey drip? I don't know this is good enough for me either. But, I guess. but in the end, she is as bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. Lest you ponder her path of life, her ways are unstable. You do not know them. We destroy our souls. We give away piece by piece. The more we do it, the more we have sex outside of marriage and with different partners, the less we have of our heart. We give away a piece of our heart. Here and here. You wonder why some people are so heartless? They're giving it all away. I mean, there's some guys, that's all they want to do, man. That's all they do. And they're heartless. They're, they're like soulless. Because they've given, they have nothing left. They have no soul. They have no heart left. They've given it all away. And you give away a piece at a time. And at the same time, we destroy somebody else. We're not just hurting ourselves. We destroy somebody else. The person that we're with, maybe our family members, well, obviously our family, especially our family, you know, our wives and our children. Proverbs 5, verse 7 and 8. Therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Move your way far from her. 
And do not go near the door of her house. Do not go near the temptation. Stay away from it. Run. <clears throat> you know what? I have a st statistic from years ago. I don't know what it is today, but this is from years ago. That a common soap opera, you know soap operas on TV? You guys know what they are? All my life or something, all my children. General Hospital. These are our lives. All, I can re all I want to remember, I watched one when I was a kid, because the girls in my classroom watched it, so I said, I, I, I can talk to them about it. But it, it, it Barnabas was there. What was that one called? Dark Shadow. You guys all know it. Dark Shadow. Vampire. Well, you know what? They have at least two sexual acts in every one of them. They're half hour shows. At least two sexual acts in every one of them. That's their formula to get you hooked to watch. Oh, look what my husband was like. You know, I guess. I don't know. You know, that's going near to the door of that house. Stay away from that door, he probably says. That's going near that door. You think that guy on the screen, you know, he's all thin and buff, you know? You think, you know, no, no, no. You're never going to get him. And when you're watching that, and you're into that, guess what? You're not thinking of your husband or your wife. You're into that. It's adultery. It's sexual immorality. How can you say that? How can you say that? That's sexual immorality. Watching that and tell How could that be sexual immorality? Well, <coughs> turn to Matthew chapter 5 and hold yourself there. And, and Proverbs 5 also. Stay there. Keep your finger there. Matthew 5. Jesus speaking. Matthew 5, verse 28. He says, But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Oh, Pastor Jim, he's talking to the men, not the women. <laughs> right. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it's more profitable for you to be <clears throat> that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. You know, Jesus is saying here that one of the issues is that adultery get, begins with the, the look, the thinking. It starts there. That's why the Bible says, take every thought captive to Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when those stupid thoughts come in, you know, out of doors, I'm like, kill that person, or you know, some stupid thought like him. You know what? Lord, I'm giving that to you. I'm going to praise you right now. You need to take that thought cap and give it to the Lord and just start praising him or quote scripture or something. Or you see something you shouldn't be seeing, turn your head, quote scripture, whatever you need to do. And like I've shared many times, you can't help the first look. It's the second one that gets you in trouble. Deal with it radically. Get rid of it. Don't go there. We were out to lunch the other day. It was quite funny, I thought. We were, we were all the guys were facing the uh, restaurant, and all the girls were facing the beach. And there was a girl in a thong. And I have to try go, whoa! -oh. And I turned back, and I, you know, Dick was there, and. Uh, what? Roger. And they go, don't turn around, guys. Don't or not. Don't turn around. And they went, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't turn around. Well, what, you know when they turn around is when Roger's wife goes, oh, look down there. We all went, whoa, no. You know, you just don't, you just can't do that. Or you shouldn't do that. You can't do it. Don't do it. Get rid of it. If, if you're struggling and if, if somebody maybe you're talking with or something and you start to maybe flirt, don't do it. Quit talking to them. Don't do it. Deal with it. And if you don't deal with it, you know, after after this scripture here we're, we're in Matthew 5 where Jesus is speaking, well, guess what he talks about next? Divorce. It comes right after that. The scriptures. You destroy your soul. You bring hell into your home. 
things go up in fire like your marriage. Your life gets messed up. It's, it's no fun. I, I've had friends that have blown it. And it was just a disaster, just a mess in their lives. Having good families and then that happened. You know, it's awful. Go back to Proverbs 5.9. It says, he's continuing on those thoughts that we left off with. He says, lest you give your honor to others. You know, you're giving yourself up. You're giving your, your pride, your honor to this other person. And your years to the cruel one. Lest aliens be filled with your wealth and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. And you mourn at last when your flesh and your body are consumed. You know, a lot of it messing around. You end up with diseases, STDs, AIDS. There's things that you get. Crabs. All kinds of weird diseases you get. STDs will eat you up. AIDS will kill you. Sexual diseases are running wild in the world. Well, in verse 12 there in Proverbs 5 says, And say, How have I hated instruction? And my heart despised correction after the person's blown it. Hey, you know what? I'm, I hated instruction and my heart despised correction. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, but I'm applying my ear to those who instructed me. I was on the verge of total ruin in the midst of the assembly and the congregation. I blew it. Why didn't I listen? That's what you say afterwards. Why did I do it? Why didn't I listen? Why did I do my thing? You don't beat God's word. God says don't. And he means it. And it's for reasons. It's for our own good. He's not trying to keep you from problems. I mean, in Corinthians, he, he says, you know, it's better to marry than to burn. He's talking about burning with lust. You know, if you can't handle it, get married, of course. Then you have to deal with the person the rest of your life. Gotta <laughs> make sure you marry the right one. The best reason to do it what the best reason to do what is right is tomorrow. Because you have to deal with the consequences tomorrow. Just do what's right. Why didn't I listen? You know what? You'll never ever hear somebody say, Hey, I'm so glad I played around. I never heard of that. Dr. Proverbs 5, verse 15 says, Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Should your fountains be dispersed of broad streams of water in the streets? You know what it's talking about there, right? Be with your own wife. Drink water from your own cistern, not everybody else's. Don't let your children be running around everywhere because you have kids from this person that person and you, you can't even take care of them anymore. It's your responsibility as a man and as a husband to take care of your family and your children. And, and you all know well that that doesn't happen a lot. You can't be great in God's kingdom and fool around. It doesn't happen. We need to toe the line. Walk with the Lord. Verse 17, Proverbs 5. Let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth as a loving deer and a graceful doe. Let her breast satisfy you all time. And always be enraptured with her love. You know what? You'll be happy. You'll be fulfilled. Your, your life will be good. One wife only. That will be true happiness in your life. Now, sometimes we're younger. We've blown it. Maybe we have walked with the Lord. And, you know, we've been through divorces and things like that. You know, God is a God of forgiveness. I mean, you know, I'm not... I don't preach up here and say, well, you had a divorce, you got kids from somebody else, you know, you're no good. No, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, there's forgiveness and, and God will use you in those situations. And you, you create you become a new creation in Christ when you get the Lord, okay? But verse 20 says, For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress? 
For the ways of a man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. His iniquities entrap the wicked man, and he is caught in the cords of his sin. He shall die for lack of instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. See, in that, in that moment, you know, with her or with him, it's all hot, and, you know, this guy's great, and it's just me and him, and guess what? God's watching. Man, I don't know if the hosts in heaven are watching, but Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore we also, since we are, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, I read that and go, oh, they're watching. God's watching in this cloud of witnesses. I don't you know, in Hebrews 12, well, Hebrews 11 talks about all these godly men, the people of faith. Are they the witnesses? Maybe, but we know the angels. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Oh no, Granny's watching. Well, you're not alone. You're not alone. God sees. You know, David, King David committed adultery. And then he murdered. And it was so bad. And in Psalm 51, he said, I have sinned against you, God, and you alone. You saw it, God. I have sinned against you. And, that, and when we do, when we go, you know, we're sinning against God. And a lot of other people are affected by it, but we are sinning against God. When Potiphar's wife wanted Joseph to sleep with her, and, you know, day after day, sleep with me, lie with me, and whatever that last day was, he had to run. So, you know, our imaginations can have to maybe what she was doing or what happened. I don't know. But he left his coat in her arms. But he said, how can I do this to the Lord? Didn't say how can I do this to her? How can I do this to the Lord? It's against God. And now you say, well, I wish I knew sooner. Well, fresh start in the Lord. Fresh start tonight, even if you need it. You know, Hebrews 10 19 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of the faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood so we can be forgiven, even for sexual immorality, even for adultery. We can be forgiven. We can be made new. The consequences may be there. We may have to deal with things. But we can have a fresh start, even tonight. Just by going before the Lord and confessing it to Him tonight. Letting Him know. <clears throat> Turning to that, those ways. Turning to Him. I mean, God said David was a man after his own heart. After he committed adultery and murder. <clears throat> a man of war. You know, and the things he did. I mean, he caused thousands of people to die because of his... Uh, Getting inside of his own brain, his own self, and his own pride. And he's a man after God's own heart. Why? Because God is a God of forgiveness. If, because of Jesus, we are forgiven. We can start new right now. Our souls are cleansed. Our bodies are washed. We are made new by his blood. And so the Lord says in Exodus 20, verse 14, he says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And you know, and I could go on for another couple hours on all kinds of examples, but I think that's enough. And again, it's not just the act, but it's even in your mind. So we, we, we as Christians need to make sure we're in His Word and taking all those thoughts captive. And those things come in. Run! Like we did at the restaurant the other day. Go! Oh, turn around. Go run. If you get in a situation, you know, one of the things is don't put yourself in a situation that could cause that temptation. And I always shared with 
the youth group, you know, I should share with adults too, don't be alone. If you, if you, a man or woman aren't alone, you know, you're in a group all the time, there's a good possibility you're not going to do anything. It's when you're alone. A little back scratch here, a little back scratch there, you know, be careful. Don't be alone. Lord, you've given us some guidelines in your word of, of things that we shouldn't do, Lord, and we fall so short all of the time, it seems like, Lord. And we thank you that you remind us, you're there for us, you forgive us. And Lord, we pray that you give us the strength that, to open, to run through those doors when temptation comes. Because you say you have, you have a way out, and we need to take those ways out, Lord. Let us see those doors to go through them, to run like Joseph, so that we will not sin against you. Strengthen us, Lord. Help us to take every thought captive to you, Lord Jesus, so that our minds be cleansed and our hearts will be cleansed and our, 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 we must be cleansed from the inside out that people would see Jesus in us. Lord, those of us who are married, let our marriages show who you are. Be a picture of your love for us. That people would see that. Lord, our hearts is that people would come to know you here in this village and on this peninsula. And most of them, Lord, the only way they're going to see the gospel is in our lives. So use us, Lord. Those who are online, Father, wherever they are, Lord, I pray for them the same prayer tonight, Lord. Use them where they're at. Help them, Lord. Strengthen them to walk with you. Now, Lord, go before us. Use us. Touch and change lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. God bless you. I don't know. Are you putting chairs up tonight? Okay. So, do you mind helping put the chairs up? Walk with Jesus.